<laughs> so we've tracked nine so far or done nine mock draft watches so far. That means so we have tracked 130 mock drafts. Woo! Let's that's go. That's a big number. It is yeah. a big number. Um, and that's season, though. And look, we've been down this path before, so we'll just touch on it briefly. But overwhelmingly, it has been receiver from the jump in terms of most popular position, mock to the Bills. Then the Diggs trade happened, and it turned into a veritable landslide. Yes. Wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver is what we have seen since the Bills traded Stephon Diggs. And as of late, we've seen the Bills trade up in mock drafts to go get different wide receivers. The one that we've seen the most is Brian Thomas Jr. He is starting to be a favorite again, mock to the Bills. Right next to Brian Thomas Jr., though, is Adonai Mitchell from mm -hmm. Texas. These two wide receivers go back to back to back to back when you're looking at how people are mocking wide receivers to the Bills. If you look in totality, out, out of the 129 that we have tracked, Brian Thomas Jr. has been mocked to the Bills 33 times. Adonai Mitchell has been mocked to the Bills 32 times. Mm, 99 wow. times a wide receiver has been mocked to Buffalo. <laughs> that is more than 77% of the mock yeah. drafts. 77 of the 129. Three draft. out of every four mock drafts put us with a wide out. More than that. <laughs> 77 And the other 25% of the people don't know what they're doing. Well, <laughs> defensive <laughs> lineman and defensive back, right? right? Those are your other two possibilities, right. which is what we were just discussing the, here yeah. earlier. I, it gets less and less likely. But here's the thing, too. I, I think, and Brownie's, I think Brownie's right, and I don't know whether this is pre-draft angst on my part, that I, I think there's going to be a ton of wideouts gone, and you, you're going to have to trade up to get A.D. A. Mitchell. You're going to have to trade up to get Brian Thomas Jr., Troy Frank, Franklin. You may have to trade up to get Troy Franklin or Xavier Worthy. Uh, we they make a lobby crazy. to have more people take offensive tackles. I think we have to start calling some teams. And edge Boy, rushers. This offensive tackle class is awesome this year. Yeah. You'd be crazy not to come out of the right. first round with one. I was on the phone with Cynthia Freeland yesterday preparing for a draft story that we're going to have go out next week. She said she would not be surprised if she sees eight offensive tackles go off the board in the first round. That okay, would, well, that's that would good. break a record. The previous record was seven offensive tackles being drafted in the first round. She believes that there are just so many teams that have offensive tackle, offensive lineman needs, and the talent in this year's draft class, specifically speaking about offensive tackle, is too good for a lot of teams to pass up right. on. Well, that would be great. Think, well, you think about it, most teams, particularly Push in the that. AFC, have an established guy that they're not, they're not one of these teams. Now, certainly at the bottom, the Patriots – who else? Denver, Cincinnati Vegas. needs a tackle. Yes, but I'm talking about quarterbacks. Oh, quarterbacks. All these teams have a quarterback that most of them have 14 or 15 of the 13 or 14 of the AFC teams. How have quarterbacks? You got to protect the guy. Yeah. And they all need that. Now the Bills are set for a minute, but that's they're unique. And they just signed Lyle Collins, so they're unique. They don't need Cincinnati anything. needs one. Jacksonville could use some help. Anyone? Miami, Cleveland, Houston, Kansas City. Yep. So Baltimore. Uh, uh, that's good. They all Let's need go. Them. That might mean you that can even argue some the wide Jets receivers get pushed probably. down to Buffalo. If offensive tackles and quarterbacks go off the board at a heavy amount in the first 20 picks, you could see some wide receivers falling to Buffalo. Look at, look now, at. the name that I think of falling is Brian Thomas Jr. I don't think Rome Adunze is going to be available at number yeah. 20 for the Bills. If those receivers start to slide, Maddie. Like like Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze. If those guys start to drop like into the second ten instead of the top ten, yeah, Dunze it, is not good. It will be, and it, you know it could happen. I guess if if teams do something I expect, particularly if teams start jumping into the first round, if those teams like at at number what we've been talking about, uh, you know the Minnesotas of the world, the Denvers and Las Vegas has tried to get up there to get one of those quarterbacks. Oh, that could push people down. I still don't I, know if the receivers are getting. People are conjecturing that 10. the New England Patriots have such a depleted roster, they're going to trade back and accumulate picks and wait for a quarterback. <laughs> so you know all that stuff. Like stuff's a quarterback, on the table. get the quarterback. Figure the rest of it out later. Quarterback's the hardest thing to find. Uh, believe me, bro. I know. I'm, I was <laughs> chuckling over here when Maddie was talking because. 
the three of us, like, we should all be committed. We're trying to speak this into existence. Make so it happen. Make it happen. Make available. it happen. We are, <laughs> we, I mean, it, this is kind of sorry. Like, this is where we are. We are so desperate for a receiver that we're trying to speak we are in the, we are the our crazy existence people. the scenarios that will make, make it happen. Maybe Roma so Dunze drops to 11 and the Bills <laughs> somehow not, get up to number 11 not without not having, to, having to trade <laughs> away a future God, first round pathetic. pick. We're just, <laughs> right. exactly Seriously. Right. What so, is right, wrong so let's say this. So all, so all of our hopes and dreams are dashed and we're stuck at 28 or whatever and all those guys all the guys are gone um and the best edge rusher like leatu latu is there from ucla i wouldn't be mad at that he's good he's talented he's, he's got really a pass good. rushing i think the one thing that he has that a lot of these other guys in the draft at his position do not have is a very deep pass rush repertoire like you have a lot of these guys are just uber talented physically. Right. So they don't need to use a lot of pass rush tools to win in college. So they don't. You know, like Chop Robinson, who's ranked right behind Law 2, he's kind of a one trick pony. He wins with speed because he's faster than every offensive tackle in football. Um, that doesn't in work. Football. In college football, yeah. That doesn't work in the NFL. Offensive tackles are too good, and they know if you are a speed guy and you don't have much else, they just set yeah. up and adjust to make sure they take Latu. care of your speed around the arc. Latu has a repertoire. Latu reminds me of Jalen Phillips from mm. the Dolphins. Um, who also started his career at UCLA. A 6'5 six, five, six, five athlete who, can, who just looks – I mean, he'd be a good athlete if he was 5'9", not 6'5". You know, he's one of those dudes. Mm. And, man, oh, man, I, I like what he looks like. And those two guys have another thing in common. Both medically retired from football. Right. Jalen Phillips, due to a series of concussions. Latu, due to a neck injury, but then got medically cleared and yeah. returned to football. Same thing with Phillips after taking a year off. What do you know about Latu? Yeah, Latu, Latu. I think he is an all-around athlete. The finesse is there with the moves that he puts on tape. He has creativity with the way that he plays the position. He makes playing edge rusher look easy. I love the way that he plays the run and the pass. He's good at shedding blocks. He's strong with the way that he can blow past offensive linemen. He led the nation in tackles for loss per game with 1.8 last season. He also had 13 sacks and 21 and a half TFLs. I think this is someone who could grow into a very talented player at the next level. The question about Latu, though, is the medical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do teams believe that he's truly okay? He had to medically retire at Washington, but he was great at UCLA. Are teams willing to take a chance on him in the first round with what's on tape, with what you think you can get out of that athlete? Well, and that's the thing, because if yeah. the medical, because if the medical's not there, he's he's probably a top ten pick. Top fifteen at worst. Totally. Right. But because of the medical, you know, you're kind of dependent upon what your doctors say. Like there might be some NFL doctors that say, too Don't big a risk. It. If you want to take him in the third round, fine. But do not use the first round pick I'll on this, this guy. Or you might have another doctor say, "This is a one contract guy." I'll say after this, four though, years, he if, might. You know, if you're thinking about a guy with this time, if he's this talented and he would be a top ten pick in most drafts without the medical, it's not just one doctor. It's not just your doctor. It's their doctor, that doctor, that doctor, and the best doctor, and the other doctor. And you're also calling the doctor that originally made him retire. I mean, you're you've got. 50 yeah, opinions. you're canvassing the thing. And you're listening to all of them. Yeah. So you got to sort through that. So if they, d if somebody does pick him, and somebody's going to, there's no question about it. He's going in this draft. If somebody picks him, it's because they are comfortable with the physicality. And he, and he's, you know, he's stayed healthy at UCLA without a problem. And Matty mentioned his production, which is well known, but he was productive lining up on the left and the right side. This isn't right. just like a right defensive end or a left. The guy played on both sides. They flipped him around to get matchups and stuff, and he won from both sides, which sometimes for a college player is easier said than done. I want to bring up one trade that we saw in mm. the mock draft watch, the latest round okay. that we tracked da, 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 da. from Chris Trapasso from CBS Sports, a good friend mm -hmm. of ours. Friend of the, friend show. Of the show. Yes, yeah. he has a trading number 28, number 60, and a 2025 first-round pick. Ooh. 
That's all go going to Atlanta for pick eight. Pick number eight Ooh. and pick number 109 in the fourth round. We're trading up to get wide receiver Malik Neighbors out of LSU. Mm. This guy is 6'0", 200 pounds. He's a consensus All-American. First team All-SEC last season. He is scary with the ball in his hands. You can line him up anywhere, and he will win the one-on-one -on -one matchups. His strength shows with the way he can make catches in traffic. He's a true separator and an explosive receiver. 78% of his catches went for a first down or a touchdown. He had two straight seasons with 1,000 yards and had 14 touchdowns in 2023. Do you think it's worth trading that to go up and get a receiver like Malik Neighbors. 28, 60, and a 2025 20, first one? round pick. Yes, 2025 20, one. That's a lot. That's our That's first lot. round pick this year, our second round pick this year, and a first round next year. Well, it's moving up 20 spots in the first round, though, too. I mean, it's going from 28 I, to 8. I don't, I don't see us doing it. I, he hates giving up future ones. And we hates wouldn't, We it. wouldn't be picking again until pick 120. You're done on day two. Yeah, you you're done be, on day two. <clears throat> right now, with that trade, you would have three fourth round picks and three fifth round picks, which you already have in your possession. So you have three fives right now and two fours. This trade would give you an additional four. So with three fours, you could easily get back into the third round if you wanted to, and make a day two pick. I don't know if you're making two day two picks though. So well, you don't have any day two picks now. Well, no, but I'm saying you could probably trade for one. I don't know if you're trading to get back in twice. So you're you got a quiet day too, man. I don't know. Yeah, I don't I'm know. I'm kind of with you. I I can't do it. I don't see Brandon giving up a future one. He didn't even do it for no. Josh Allen. I can't see him doing it for a receiver. I just can't. So you guys, right now where we sit, you would rather remain at number twenty-eight. <laughs> Move back or maybe move up into the teens to go get yeah, a guy rather I, than move up into the top 10 to yeah, go get I one said, of the best three. I said this earlier on the show today. I think if Brian Thomas, for some reason, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but if for some reason he gets past the Colts at 15, okay, I think Brandon's on the phone. Malik Neighbors is a great player. And he comes from a... a a school that the toughest conference adds, in football that adds some validity to expectations because there's been a guy coming out there's been guys coming out of this program for the last half dozen years that are studs at that position so you think when you draft a guy out of there who has played as well as he has in that system against that conference in against that in that schedule that he's the real deal right and you're giving up the chance to pick at 28, at 60, and next year at <laughs> hopefully 32. If you pick up at 32 next year, nobody cares what you did this year. What, you, if, you what if he's the missing piece to oh, having wow. an amazing yeah, season right, right. next year? What if, yeah, what if, I don't the know. Needle I don't know, what guys. If, I'm what if open Leatu, to it. Latu is I'm the missing piece, it. and you pass on him and, and pick this dude. You could play this game anyway. You could yeah. play with any position. It's so hard at this point, a week away from the NFL draft. I am down for whatever happens. I just want this team to be better in 2024. Yeah. And if Malik Neighbors gets two, us one, there, two, two. yeah, I and he gets us to the promised land. Yeah, I think the I'm depth. Okay. Of, I think the depth of the receiver class. I, I think it makes it doesn't make a move like that an absolute necessity. Yes, Neighbors is an outstanding player. There's no doubt about it. Um, I think the depth of the receiver class, which may be the best we've ever seen in the last 25 years, I, I think that keeps him from. Yeah, there's a bunch of solid pros further down the line <clears throat> for wide receiver, and I'm not saying they're not, they're not, you know, they're not Jamar Chase and Malik Neighbors and Marvin Harrison Juniors and that kind of thing. But there's some really solid professional yeah. football players in this draft at wide receiver. I want to say one quick point on that. There's a lot of with some of these wide receivers who are in the second tier of talent, you're projecting on what they can do at the next level. But with a quarterback like Josh Allen, you may be able to get the best out of that yeah. second tier. You got one of the two best quarterbacks in football. He That's can right. elevate the players around him, which, again, it kind of says 
you know what, going all the way up there and getting rid of all this draft capital, that's not an absolute necessity. You know, we could be, we can live with guy B, C, D, or E, and he'll be fine. So, uh, great stuff all uh, pre-draft season here, Maddie, and collecting all of this data Good for the mock stuff. drafts. It's we fun. appreciate I it. I love it. Uh, as Maddie said, week. one Maybe last. Maybe we'll try and do one more next week. Yeah, yeah. As we said, one last mock draft coming your way Put on buffalobills.com next week. Mm -hmm. So keep an eye out for that, although I can't see much changing between <laughs> <laughs> since the dig trade. <laughs>